Welcome everyone. In this series of tutorials we're going to build a rock paper scissors game on the computer and we'll start by learning how to generate random numbers between 1 and 3 so that we can assign a 1, a 2, or a 3 to our values of rock, paper, and scissors. So let's go ahead and get started. We are going to use this random number generator in our computer player so that his move will be generated randomly so we'll say public class computer player open and close curly braces um, this class will eventually have fields a constructor and various methods so we'll go ahead and put those comments in right now and one of our methods will be our random number generator for the computer players move. So the first way we're going to tackle this is very similar to the coin flip game. We're going to create our method signature which will be public int generate num and it's going to return a number of type integer. So we'll need to create a local vi variable called and we'll call it int rnd for random and then we'll set random equal to um, math.random which will pull a number between 0, 0.0 and 0 0.99 so then we multiply it by the number of choices we have and in our coin flip game we had two choices heads or tails and in this game we have three choices of rock paper or scissors so we need to multiply by three and then we really only want an integer so we are going to cast this as an integer and of course this is a narrowing conversion and then this will give us a number of 0, 1, or 2, and but we want 1, 2, or 3, so we will add 1 to our algorithm at the end, and then we need to return our value, which is an integer. Okay, so here is our algorithm, and I'm going to go ahead and save this file, and I'm going to save it as com computer player and I saved it in a folder for our game. So now I need to get to create my runner class which is going to be my game cl play class and then we'll use that class to test this uh, algorithm out. So we are going to create a new file and this time it's going to be public class um, RPS rock paper scissors game and open and close parentheses, I mean curly braces, and then we'll put our main method in here. So we'll say public static void main string args for arguments, open and close braces, close the parentheses, and open and close curly braces. So in, in order to run our other class, we will need to instantiate an instance of it. So we say computer player. It's all one word though. Um, player one is good enough. Is equal to new computer player. Open and close parentheses and a semicolon. And now we can call that method on our player. So and we want to print it out. So we'll do a system dot out dot print ln and we'll say player ones. Uh, integer for now is a and then we'll say plus and then we want to call that object so we say player one dot and the method name that we called it before was generate num open and close parentheses close the println statement off and a semicolon. So let's go back and check to make sure that's what it was titled. It says generate num is our method and we're instantiating a player and generate num. So let's go ahead and save 
compile here. So this is going to be our RSP, I'm sorry, rock, paper, scissors game. And then once we save it, we can go ahead and compile. Looks like we don't have any errors. And then we can run our first example. So here we have player one's integer is a three. Let's run it a couple more times to see what we get. Now it's a two. Now it's a two. See if we can get a one. We got a high roller here. There we go. So we generate a one, two, or three with this version. So now what we can do is, I'll go just go ahead and add a period here. Correct grammar is always a good thing. So now what we want to do is go back to our computer player and we will look at another way to generate random numbers. This way is going to be a little bit more abstract so that it can be used in other types of um, games so and in other types of situations. So we might say public int and then we'll say give this method a different name so we'll say get random number or get random int and then we'll do open and close curly braces and in this one we'll go ahead and instantiate a local variable again so we'll say int rnd and then we'll set rnd equal to math math.random but here we want to times it by the range that we want so I'm going to put an asterisk here and I'm going to go ahead and put in my casting as an integer also while I'm at it so we are going to pass in two variables one called low end and one called high end and this way we can abstract our method and allow ourselves to pass in the low end of our range and the high end of our range so in this case we're working with one to three in other cases like a dice we might be working with one to six or you could be working with a like a guessing game and have it one to a hundred so now instead of timesing it by the number of choices we have we multiply it by the high end minus the low end and we add one and then we also need to add the low end to the range and then we'll go ahead and we will return our value so let's look at this uh, we generate a number and we are going to cast it as an integer so we're getting some number so here our high end is three our low end is two so we three I'm sorry our low end is one so three minus the low end is two plus one is three plus our low end is four so let's say our random number that we're generating is 0.5 times integer makes it zero so we have three minus one is two plus one plus one alright so let's try some values here so now when we copy our we are going to go ahead and make this an instance of player two and this will have to be player two and now instead of calling generate num we are going to call get random int so here we're, this is going to be get random int but we're asking for a low end and a high end so we're going to have to pass in one and three as parameters so now let's go ahead and comment out 
this one method here and we will compile to make sure we have no errors it looks good and now we'll go ahead and run this player 2 version so now we get player 1 player 1 is a 1 we get a 2 we get a 1 we get a 2 let's see if we can get a 3 before we quit here on our examples there we go so you can see that you you're getting you have your high end and you're passing in your low end and actually these should probably be three comma one because we're passing them in the order of our nope we did say low end and high end so these need to be one and three they have to match in order so here we have our variables our local variables are low end and high end so we want to pass in a one for the low end and a high end for the three and our third method um, then is we're going to use the random class to generate a random number and we're going to say public int generate int and we'll do open and close curly braces now we will instantiate an instance of the random class so what we have to do here is import it at the top so we use import java.util.random semicolon and then down here in our method we can instantiate an instance of the random class so we'll say random generator which is just the name I've given it equals new random and then we'll uh, also instantiate a variable to hold our value and then we'll say rnd is equal to generator G E N E R A T O R dot next int. And here we pass in the value, the exclusive value that we want. So it's going to generate a number between 0 and 2. And so therefore we will have to add a 1 to it if we want to generate a number between uh, 1 and 3. And then we will need to return our integer. So we we'll return R and D. You could also use this if you wanted a number between 1 and 10. This would be 10 and this would be 1. If you wanted a number between um, 15 and 20, then this would be 21. And um, you would have to add 15 here to the end so that it would start at 15. All right, so let's go ahead and compile this one. and now we're going to instantiate an instance of our third version and this this was let's see player two and this is going to be player three so we'll do player three here and we need to make this one player three and we'll go ahead and comment out player two and then we need to call generate int and we do not add a high a low and a high end in this one and we compile and then we can run our example a couple of times there's a two and there's a one and uh, we are done for this tutorial have a good day